So I just wanted to thank Melvin for uh, including me in this channel because I am really excited about what is going to come of it because as far as I know, it's pretty much the first of its kind. And that is ridiculous considering how many men there are who date uh, men. Um, so I guess I'll just start this off with a lot of the stuff that was in my intro video. I'm going to talk really quickly because I had just filmed a video and it was super long. So here we go. My name is Mason. I'm an Afro-Latino-American from San Francisco. Uh, I guess relating-wise, my orientation is polysexual, my sexual designation is demisexual, and my preferred relating style is non-monogamy. Um, I also figured it was helpful to mention, even if it's a little embarrassing, that I sometimes dabble in queer porn. Um, so if you recognize me from there and, you know are interested in what I have to say when I, you know, am doing more than being naked? Great! Now you see me here. Um, I'm a gender non-conforming, trans male identified person. I identify as two-spirit, a femme aggressive, butch queen, and in, like, the cisgender gay community, I'm what is commonly known as a pup. Um, I'm also an Aries Tories cusper, if you're into that. Uh, beyond that, um, my life is pretty normal. Aside from the fact that, you know, I'm low income and disabled, um, but I'm pretty much a normal 25-year-old guy beyond that. Um, I'll just get into the topic. I guess I've always known I wasn't 100% into either gender. The other example that, you know, directly comes to mind is when I was in kindergarten, I had two weddings. I got married to a guy and a girl, um, and I guess that for me was like... <laughs> so normal, even at that age, that it just hasn't become a thing. Um, it's also helpful to mention that unlike many, many trans men I know, I never, ever identified as a lesbian. I never have. I never will. Uh, it was commonly an identity or a label that was pushed on me by other people who did not know how to interpret, you know, my gender identity or my sexual orientation, but that was never my thing. Um, I actually came out super young. I came out at nine, and I came out as bi then, because I did not have, you know, any concept of queer theory, gender theory, or, you know, how much I would eventually hate the binary and not want anything to do with it when I got older. But that was my first, you know you know, announced orientation, and, you know, I've since retracted that. I'm now polysexual, meaning I'm attracted to most, but not all, genders. Um, so, yeah. I was also never really into identifying as butch or masculine, but that was something that was put on to me, um, which is interesting because I, now that I'm a little older, um, really like to think about you know, the social connotations that all of that has and what that means for the privileges I receive in this world and the privileges I don't receive in this world because, you know, I'm now perceived as, you know, a non-white, masculine-looking, masculine-acting male, even though those aren't necessarily the words I would use to define myself when I leave my, you know, the comfort of my house, that's how I'm defined. Um, so, that's really interesting for me to think about. Um, as for my dating history, I dated cis men briefly when I was in my late teens, early 20s. Um, I've been dating trans men for the past three, three and a half years. I dated genderqueer folks, uh, male-bodied and female-bodied, um, probably since the beginning of my dating history, and since I was usually perceived as a lesbian at the beginning of my sexual history, I've had my fair share of female, cis-female partners. Um, I guess what complicates for things for me in terms of, like, my relating style now that I am a man into men is, you know, a lot of just, you know, mixed feelings about what that entails. Not by me, but from other people, is, uh... You know, there's a lot of guys who assume that because you are trans, that there is no way you could possibly be sexually aggressive, or dominant, or a top. And for me, those things are all true. Those things are all part of my identity and part of my sexual relating style, and they're often either ignored or dismissed uh, by cis guys, or it's just something they're not into, because, you know, the second you tell a cis guy that he's not running the show, he usually either freaks out or loses interest, or on the other side, tries to convince you that, like, you just don't know what you're missing. And for me, that's 
I gotta say that's the biggest cock block for me is that I can't get anyone to take my identity seriously or um, recognize it as valid. Um, and on the flip side with that, with straight women or uh, cis lesbians, uh, they're really squeaked by the idea that, you know, I deal with other men and, you know, they're really afraid of what that means for them in terms of a risk factor, which is ironic because I used to work as a safer sex educator and I am almost overly cautious about the encounters I have and really into low risk and encounters and harm reduction in every encounter I have, so... I always, I always think that's pretty funny, that like, people are afraid that they're gonna, you know, catch something, but I'm, I'm totally safe. <laughs> um, I guess that's about it. That's all I really have to say, and I look forward to talking more with you guys on the channel, and I will see you all soon. Bye.